Hello everyone, this is Tamara with From the Treetop Photography with my part one textures tutorial. This is going to be just your basic texture application to show you how to use blend modes and layers to achieve uh, these beautiful results with textures. I know many of you have had questions. I use textures quite heavily in my work. I have for several years and they're a big part of my artistry. I feel that uh, many people are afraid of textures because textures can be misused and they're not for every image, but when you know how to use them correctly, you can really create some beautiful results. So first of all, we have this image. Uh, it is the same image that you saw in the intro. However, the intro image has already been edited with texture. This would be the before. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice, well-exposed image, uh, nice light, uh, nice open background. If, if he would have needed any skin correction, we would have already done that. However, uh, his skin is just beautiful. It looks pretty good just straight out of the camera. So uh, basically just get your image prepped before you start your texture application. So one of the most common ways to bring the texture into your image is to go up to File, press Open, open your texture, and you'll see it pop open in a separate window. So the way to get the texture onto your image is to click on your Move tool, hold down the Shift key, and simply drag. Now, you may be wondering why it looks different on the image. And the reason for that is because the textures are very high resolution files, and a lot of times they may be bigger than the image itself. So the, we want to get it back down to the right size so we can get the vignetting. You could use it this way, and that's one of the options with textures that makes them versatile. But let's go ahead and uh, let me show you how to shrink it down. You'll want to go up to Edit, come down to Free Transform, and you'll see a parameter here. And that is actually the texture, the size of the texture. So while holding the Shift key, just grab one of those corners and pull in. And that shift key, by holding that shift key while you move it around, it just maintains the aspect ratio for you so that you don't stretch out your texture and, 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 and ruin the, the look of it. Okay, so you would be ready to start your application. And that's one way. Now, the way I like to place my texture, which to me is a little more simple, is that to go up to File, go down to Place, choose your texture, in this case, we're doing Lost Diary and Frost. And it puts it right on the image for you, as you can see, pretty much perfectly sized. You just take those little bars and move them. Click. Come over to your Layers palette. You can see your texture above your image. Right-click on that Textures layer. Scroll down and Rasterize Layer. And now you're ready to go. So that's the first step to getting to getting your texture onto your image. Okay, now that you have your texture imported onto your photo, this is where a lot of people get confused and run into a roadblock. They, they don't know how to go from having this image on top of their picture to getting a beautiful result. And the key is blending, blend, blend, blend. So let's go over here to the Layers palette, and we have um, our texture layer here. Make sure you're selected your texture layer. Go up to your blend modes, which are located right here below layers where it says normal. Click that little drop down menu, and here are all your blend modes. Many, many of these can be used uh, when using textures. Some of the most commonly used and the easiest for beginners are overlay or soft light. I love to use multiply and color burn as well, but I will be teaching those in a more advanced tutorial. So let's just go ahead and select overlay. So now we have our texture in overlay at 100%. And as you can see, the results are quite dramatic. It's illuminated the image, and it's also given us interesting color and almost a canvas-like texture in the background. Now this is where people are really uh, intimidated by textures. The, the canvas-like effect is also on his skin and clothes. And uh, this is where a lot of people I see erasing the textures and leaving a very noticeable difference between the texture and the subject and that's kind of where a lot of misuse of textures comes in and erasing does work sometimes and I have used it myself but I think the very best way that I have found that I prefer to use to get to eliminate that coarse texture from your subject and the clothing is to use the lasso tool go up and select your lasso tool it's a little rope here on the left 
set it to about 150 to 200. Uh, it could be smaller than that if you have a smaller image, but 150 is pretty, pretty good. So let me go ahead and just outline those areas that I don't want all that coarse texture in. Okay, so now you'll see the little marching ants around him, around his clothing areas. Sometimes you may not want, you just may want to do the skin. Um, I prefer just to get it off of the main area of the clothing. Uh, once we have this, we're going to go up to filter, down to blur, then select average. And like that, like magic, it is beautiful. It has blended it for you. There's not a lot of erasing, not a lot of brushing. And the beautiful thing is his skin is perfectly clear, but the texture blends in. You can't see where the texture ends or begins, and that's the key to a good texture use. So that's a pretty simple way to achieve that effect. Now, uh, I think I want to go ahead and bring the opacity down a bit. Uh, the opacity will make your texture either bolder or more subtle. You see here, you go all the way from just a tiny bit to a little bit more to this, and then of course, very bold. And some images uh, at 100% is just going to be way too much. Uh, as a matter of fact, most images that I put texture on, I'm probably at about a 50% opacity, if not lower percent opacity at times. So I'm going to move mine down to about like an 80, about 85%. I think that looks really nice. Uh, again, I think that in this, I'm very lucky with this image. It's a greatly exposed image, so I don't really need to do much to his face as far as shadows. What I don't like, however, is a, there's a little bit too many yellow tones in his skin for me. So uh, he's still selected here, and if for some reason uh, those little marching ants were to disappear on you, you can always go back up to select and then click reselect, and that should show back up. But mine is still selected, so I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and just um, change the hue a bit in his skin, because it's only going to be changing the area here that I have selected. So I think I want a little more pink in his skin. And you can experiment here and, and do it different ways, but and it's probably very subtle to see on the computer, but his skin already looks a little rosier and a little less yellow. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now let's go ahead and just deselect to get rid of that, those little ants. And I really love it. I think it looks beautiful. Um, I think I could put some finishing touches on it now. Let's go ahead and flatten the file. Now one thing you need to think about when you're doing textures is you want to make a copy of the original never work on the original because um, there's so many steps with textures you could end up with a result you're just not that crazy about and honestly you know it's nice to have your original to fall back on in case you want to start over or in case it just wasn't a great image for textures okay so um, we could be done right now this would be beautiful uh, more things we can do I like to use the sponge tool set to saturate and you can take and, and uh, Put that down to about 41%. And you can kind of just add a little bit more color, maybe into his clothing, and onto his skin. And of course, you know, this is very subtle here. I'm going to go ahead and fade that back a bit. If you get too much, you can just come up here to, to edit and then fade. And that's what I've done here, and I'm just going to fade it a tiny bit, or it was a little too much. You can see there. So I'm done now. I think it looks beautiful, and that is a pretty simple and basic way to apply a texture. I hope this has helped you guys. I hope that you're less intimidated by textures now. I plan to uh, do more tutorials for you in the future. Uh, I am working in Photoshop uh, CS4, uh, however, Textures are compatible with elements or any uh, program that uses layers. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.